Hello everyone, welcome to Software Dude. In this video, we'll talk about AI system design. Uh, we'll break it down uh, how AI systems work and how AI systems are built, uh, starting from data pipelines to completely till uh, model service, right? Uh, whether you are new to AI or a software developer transitioning from traditional systems or anyone wanting to learn the fundamentals of AI, how it is done, what is the structure, uh, what is the high level architecture, stuff like that, this is your starting point, right? So let's get started. Before we dive into how AI systems are built, let's get at the very top, right? Let's start at the very top. What is artificial intelligence really? Artificial intelligence refers to, it's a broad field of computer science, right? Focused on building uh, systems that can perform tasks which are typically require uh, human intelligence. Uh, things like understanding language or recognizing images or uh, making decisions, uh, so to speak, right? Now, artificial intelligence is a broad uh, concept, uh, but internally it can be divided into, like this is how it is. Artificial intelligence is the broadest concept. Inside that is uh, machine learning. Machine learning is a subset of AI, right? Now, most of the AI uh, we see in the real world today is, is actually machine learning or ML, right? Rather than like programming rules by hand, what ML does is it, it teaches computers to learn patterns from data, right? So the more examples you give it, the better that model gets, right? And even inside that is neural networks or deep learning, right? Which is a subset of machine learning. Right? Uh, which is uh, basically it is when you think about neural networks it is these are structures right which are inspired by the human brain right so to solve very complex tasks like uh, generating uh, realistic texts or uh, identifying objects in images like those kind of areas like this entire broad uh, spectrum is basically called AI and then ML and then deep learning which also contains the neural networks which are brain-like structures, right? Now, what is the difference between a traditional system and an AI system, right? So it is important to understand that so that we can correlate how different steps or life cycle of building uh, a traditional system versus an AI system is fundamentally different, right? So the first is the logic, right? In traditional system, the logic is code-driven, we write programming language is code, right? And that drives the logic. Uh, in AI systems, it is data or model driven, right? The output in the traditional system is deterministic because the code that you write is what it will work towards, right? You will hear these terms called deterministic or predictable, right? Uh, that is because it is it works as it is coded, right? But in AI systems, it is probabilistic, right? Because uh, it is learning and it is giving answers and outputs based on data that it has. So there is no rule that is said based on X, then you give Y, right? It's a, it's a learning. So the answers are also, and the outputs are also probabilistic. The life cycle, the life cycle is a bit complex and that is what we'll uh, also go in depth uh, in where we'll discuss the high level architecture is in the traditional system, you basically build and then deploy, right? Obviously you test and stuff like that, but you build and deploy. But in AI systems, you first collect the data, right? You then train uh, the AI system, the model, then you deploy the model, you monitor, sanitize uh, uh, data and stuff like that. And then you again continue to retrain, right? So, so the life cycle is very different to make the system, the AI system even more uh, uh, ready with the data, right? So that it can serve answers more realistically, right? Testing, uh, in the traditional systems, you all must be knowing uh, unit testing, integration testing, regression testing, like these are the kind of system testing that is there. In AI system, it's more statistical testing, right? Uh, A-B testing, data validation, because a lot of the game is around data. Failure, uh, in traditional systems, again, exceptions or outages are are what causes the failures uh, or bad code or uh, anything around that. In AI systems, the failures are more silent, right? It is a silent degradation based on bias, drift, hallucination, like those are the kind of, because understand like that's also an intelligence, right? So it might not be uh, like always accurate. It might build bias, right? It might be able to 
talk about things only on things that it has learned about right so that is why uh, you know, failures are are silent and it is also difficult to detect and then uh, scalability in traditional systems you scale cpus memory network like bottlenecks wherever those are you try to de bottleneck them uh, but in ai systems it's more gpu utilization it's more model loading batch inferences uh, so that is how you build scalability right so that is a high level difference between how we build traditional software systems versus how ai systems work now if we if we think of it for software developers as an analogy right so say if you want to build a function called approve loan right something like this is what we will do right you will get the income from the person you will get the credit score and you will check the income you will check the credit score if it is uh, more than a certain value then you will approve the loan if not then you will not approve the loan a very very deterministic uh, logic to actually respond back whether a person is going to uh, get a loan approved or not right but in in the ml approach in the machine learning approach what we do is we train a model with historical data hundreds and thousands of uh, people with their profile with the income with their credit card and whether loan was approved or rejected like based on data we basically feed the model with the historical data and then the model will build those networks right learn from the data it will build the patterns and the networks and infer the approval logic by itself we are not going to tell them like how it will work how it will not work uh, they will automatically uh, uh, like infer the logic now the, an interesting part that we will go through here is the ai system life cycle like this is the high level architecture of a, of an ai system first starts with the data sources like where raw information originates right like example databases apis user activity uh, iot devices sensors right so that is the first step we 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 gather the raw in uh, information which is the data sources from there it goes to data pipelines data pipelines basically they process uh, uh, the, the those are the processes that basically you know collect clean uh, transform like move around data to the next stage that is the pipeline right now from the data source we go to the data pipeline from the data pipeline we build feature engineering that means basically we transform the raw data into meaningful inputs which are we in technical software world also we call them features uh, which can be used by the models right then there is model training right like we use historical data to teach the model how to make predictions right that is a training part of it after that we do model evaluation right now the model has trained now so after that we assess the model's accuracy fairness right like a general ability like to answer uh, questions before it is uh, really deployed right then what we do is we do that and then we monitor uh, or track the model's performance over a period of time right and and we try to detect whether it is uh, whether there are shifts in the in the data that is being fed or the predictions that it is making right once that happens what we do is model registry uh, which is a version controlled store of trained and validated models which are ready for deployment right so that is the model registry it's a registry of all trained and validated models and then finally we do model serving which is basically which exposes the model via apis to serve predictions in real time or in batch right which is basically then used by customers right so this is the high level life cycle of a uh, ai system right high level architecture now let's talk about what are the types of ai and how they are served this will be an interesting slide because a lot of things are going around in the world that you might be hearing but what are the all the types of ai so the first is the predictive ai this is the most common and beginner friendly ai right it basically helps you predict something like whether a transaction might be a fraud or what sales will be next month like these models often run as apis right or reports or are fairly easy to solve basically that is called predictive ai then there is classification ai classification ai here ai is acting like a decision maker like is this email a spam right is this image a dog or a cat right so we give it labeled data and it learns to sort things into categories right that is called classification okay. then there is perpetual ai this type of ai this type helps machines 
sense the world, right? Like they can hear, they can see, they can even feel at times, right? Uh, like think about face ID or speech recognition, right? These models are much larger. They usually need uh, GPUs uh, to, to serve very efficiently. Then there is generative AI. This one you might be already aware of. This is the one everyone is talking about which is basically models that create things, right? Text, images, code, right? These are the chat GPTs of the world, so to speak, right? They often require a lot of compute and some use also external knowledge bases for, for giving better answers, right? Then there is reinforcement learning. Uh, reinforcement learning, these models learn from trial and error, right? So like training a robot or a game agent to figure out the best moves, right? So you might have seen videos of a robot jumping and trying to jump and falling and again trying and again falling and again trying and again succeeding, right? Like that is what a trial and error period happens and this is where we train the models to do that, right? You, we don't just feed them data, uh, they also learn from actions and feedback uh, over a period of time, right, to get better. And then there is uh, recommendation systems. Uh, so ever wondered how Netflix picks uh, shows for you, recommended shows for you, right? That's recommended AI. Uh, it basically learns your preferences from past behavior and then suggests things that you might like, right? Often uh, combining several AI methods, right? So that is uh, the high level AI system design. Hopefully this was useful as a starting point, like how if you are changing from a, a traditional software development lifecycle to uh, AI based system, uh, development, right? Uh, then how to think about this? What is the complete life cycle of training, building, model serving, registry keeping, right? Uh, monitoring, drip detection, like all those things are very important in the AI world. And then depending on the type of AI, there can be different ways of so using AI to give different kinds of capabilities, which are the types of AI that we, are, we have mentioned here, right? Which like depending on which area you are working on, that will be the type of model that will be used and that will be the type of uh, serving method that you might have to uh, implement to or have to use uh, to serve to make the model serve requests from customers right so hopefully this was useful thanks for watching